Hello friends, welcome to Jugartic. So in this series of tutorial, I'm going to start and talk about Node-RED. What is Node-RED? How it's bringing OT and IT together with open source architecture and allowing people to use low code programming for PLC and also for the IT. Which means without using traditional ID, we can program the PLC and access all the IOs and pass all this data to the IT world without much effort. So most of the time operational technology work in island or a standalone mode of operation. Everything remains inside the control room. Nothing can be accessed outside. But with the introduction of industry 4.0, the major change which was asked is to be connected, which means we have to be connected with outside world, integrate our system with the IT and go beyond our boundary limit. So in order to do that, there were two innovative people who thought how we can make it easy. So Dev and Nick, they made, wanted to make something disruptive and easy to use application, where with some configuration, this both the world can get connected and which leads to the innovation of Node-RED, which on one side connecting with OT world using industrial protocol like MQTT, OPC UA and with other side on IT side it was connecting and passing those data to the databases, to the cloud, to the dashboard in a real time working system. So there's this thought it actually built a community which brought the whole IT and OT world together a lot of people contributed to make it IoT and IoT compatible. So let's see what exactly Node-RED is. So Node-RED is nothing but it is a flow-based programming tool. It was originally developed by the IBM as Nick and Deb were working in IBM and now it is part of the OpenJS. So how exactly it works? How exactly we program? So if you see it is a flow-based programming tool where we are putting nodes in a flow-based manner and getting the results out. So why it is Node-RED? So mostly it is told that it was developed with Node.js and all these points were called as nodes. So it was called as Node. I read and still don't know why it is read. So it is just a name. So Node-RED can be installed on any application, any OS. It is OS agnostic as of now. So Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Linux, Mac, Windows, even Docker containerization, clouds, and we can use flow fuse and resilient devices to deploy it in mass and it can be also installed on the control system like plc's using docker feature so there are a lot of plc's which support docker and container features nowadays like wago control x phoenix so there are a lot so with that we can install it on any system any devices so let's see how we can do it on the wago so in order to do that, first we need to install the Docker. So with the latest firmware versions, Docker's are already there. We just need to enable it. And I'm using memory card because a lot of containers I have to install. So it will take extra spaces. So if what you are seeing right now that I have, in, I have formatted SD card. And now what I will do is I will move the whole Docker image onto the mount everything onto the memory card from the main plc memory so if you see this is the docker which is installed on the home folder which is in the plc memory and that i will be moving it to the sd card so that now the sd card doesn't have docker so let's see how exactly we need to do so it is just the basic commands which we need to follow and copy that docker directory from the home to the sd card so when we run that command we can see that the docker folder is created in the sd card also so with this, uh, the Docker has been copied and now we need to do some configuration in the configuration file of the Docker so that all the container which are getting created should be created in this particular folder. So we need to provide the location and change the location of the Docker. So from the media, I'm putting it to SD. So media SD because that is the path of the Docker. So with this change, now whatever the container we will install it will go in this particular folder 
and in the container folder of this it will get installed so once we are done with uh, all this configuration uh, we need to start so i'm putting the basic command to start the docker and it will lead to the starting of the docker so we can see uh, whether the docker has been started or not by putting a command called docker info so once we enter the command docker, docker info it will provide all the information for the dockers what is the versions and everything okay so and we can also see uh, that in the configuration itself uh, whether what is the status of the docker so if you see the current state is running and service is enabled so this is uh, one thing which we always need to find and with df command we can see that we have the memory card installed with the 32 GB so 32 GB is what is supported by the Waco PLC and now I am installing the node read so we need to put a command docker pull node read so it will pull the noted latest version of the noted from the docker once it is pulled we need to create a folder so i'm creating it with the create docker volume create and then we need to restart the container of the node red so that we can access so the second container i'm installing is the mqtt uh, mosquito so uh, which we, we will utilize uh, for accessing and cutting connecting with the wago io and for that we need to also install the the KBus API which is developed by the Jesse Cox who is working in the Vago so he has developed and provided it as an open source so once we download and pull this also from the docker hub we will be able to start and connect to the Vago IO so this is these are the three uh, different container which we need to install okay so once this particular uh, doc, uh, container is installed let's uh, we need to go to the volume so if you see here right now all the different folders has been created and once uh, i start the kbus api so this is the command uh, which we need to put and we can see that the kbus api folder is also created where we will find the kbus api configuration so this particular configuration is coming by default uh, with uh, some of the options so if you see uh, i'm just copying it on another folder so i can edit it so now if you see we have here the node id the pfc 200 and all the different configurations are there with which it will connect with the mosquito mqtt so this is uh, one of the thing which uh, we have to utilize and this configuration will be needed after that as we will create one directory for the mosquito configuration and the, we need to create a folder because the structure which I'm using I'm putting that in the root folder itself with the mosquito folder name and I will put here the configuration file for the MQTT so with this particular configuration if you see it has all the configuration related to MQTT and how exactly uh, both it will connect with other clients so you can find all these things in the configuration okay so with all this configuration we are ready to go and start our low code programming where we will be utilizing directly the io from the wago plc's so now let's see which all the containers are running so let me put the command docker ps and we see that all are up now and healthy condition so let me log into the noted and so here what we will do is we will so we will configure here the mqtt and we will see whether it is able to connect or not so server as it is running on localhost we can provide the localhost no topic so hash and we can see that it is connected and we are able to get all the details of the pfc 200 so switch is at run mode and what all the ios are connected so that we can find in the debug we can also utilize uh, wago api and another thing which we need to check is we have to put the plc runtime version in none because we are not using codices so it will be directly connecting to the io so all the nodes are added into the palette and now we can utilize those nodes to configure the io so we have the kbus in which is for the input we have the kbus out for the output part so these two we have to utilize based on the what io we are selecting so as i'm selecting digital output so i will be using kbus out and we will configure the digital output card into the node red and we will first connect it with the kbus out and then we will 
go and edit the KBus out node. So node ID we have to keep it as a PFC 200 because that is what is put configured into the, our configuration file. So if you remember we had the KBus API configuration file where we need to define the node ID. So let me show you again. So here if you see the node ID, node underscore ID is PFC 200. So if we change here we need to change on the configuration on the node also. So we have to keep the same name at the both the places. So with this configuration we will be able to connect with the output with the API basically. So that node ID is a uh, very important parameter which we need to consider. Now uh, we will configure it here and when we click done. So this configuration is done. Now for the digital output uh, we also have to provide module number so if you have seen in the debug it will come so module number let me just show you and if we see that we have the module count as one and in the module details you could find so position is one and type is do okay so we can utilize the same module position is one so module id one channel how many channels we have so i am using first channel so that also we can see in the details basically okay so all the channels are there four channel card is this one and i'm using channel one we can give a name so these are the basic configuration which we need to do and once it is done yeah we can create our own logic so i'm just let me create the logic for that so okay this is the logic which i have created and when we inject the node we can see on the hardware that it is able to provide the command to the output card so when it is true it is creating light on when it is false it is making it off so in this way we can be able to connect with the digital output card so let me show you how we can do it for the inputs analog inputs and analog output so i have changed the configuration now i have three cards one analog input one analog output one digital and analog output is looped back to the analog input so whatever the command we will be give to the analog output the same will be reflecting into the analog input so here also we have to do the same configuration and we have to provide module channel so it as it is analog input and output so we need to provide what type it is 4 to 20 or 0 to 10 based on that we have to configure all those parameters and then i am just configuring some of the basic logic so that when i send the command what it will show on the input side and the output side so these are the basic configuration which we need to do and if you see in the debug also it is provided all the different configurations so now if you see i have given a command for the 10000 and the counts i am getting there is 9972 and it is keep changing if i inject a value of 1000 the analog input card is getting a different value so in this way analog input and output can be configured very easily so right now i am using directly the io into the node red no codices id no e cockpit id is needed so this is what we call it as a low code programming where we don't have to program much and we can access all the things directly into the node red so this is what it provides so these are the very basic configuration so which we do so another thing which we need to check is the process so we have our resolution so we have 16 bit 12 bits all those kind of bits are there so based on the resolution of your card you can select what kind of resolution you want so even if i right now if you see i'm selecting 12 bit or 16 bit it is not impacting here much but it is good to have the correct resolution of the card so the resolution of the card uh, if you see we can find it in the details of the technical data of the cards and it will be shown here what resolution it is so if you see here it is 12 bit resolution so we can configure the resolution bit as 12 bit in the debug part you can also find the details of the what card is connected so like 466 554 so those details also will come in the debug node okay so all the details you can find in the debug when you are connected with the mvdd so that is uh, where all the information will be available so now let's uh, check a uh, few other things so i have connected multiple uh, digital output and now we have the analog input analog output so if you see the values are keep changing and when we give command to any of the 
distance output they will be also reflecting on the channel so one of the thing which uh, we need to also check is if you see here we have to in the input side we have a process data and a status so we always need to connect it to the process data so that we can read the values from the analog input so this is all about the low code programming in the waco thanks for watching that's all for this video uh, see you in the next one